Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Thursday Thought for the Day. Again, it's great to have you with us. Uh, thank you for being with us all the way through this series. We just got today and then tomorrow, and that's the last in this series of uh, Thought for the Day from Hebrews 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, today, well, yesterday we looked at Jericho, didn't we? That famous passage, um, Joshua and his battle and the faith uh, in God's plan for uh, for the way in which he was going to work things through in, in the battles of our lives. And um, today we're going to look at a, a strange name on the list of the Hall of Fame of Faith, one you wouldn't perhaps expect to be there, Rahab the prostitute. What on earth is she doing in this place? Well, let's pray together first, shall we, and ask God to help us with this this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity again to come and share around your word and we we thank you, Lord, for this chapter. Thank you for all that's taught us, for the inspiration of faith and the description of faith that we read here. And just today, Lord, we pray you'd help us to understand uh, what you've got to say to us this morning through the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Rahab, yes, the prostitute. What on earth is a prostitute doing here? How on earth did she get in? this list of people of faith, you know, to actually be mentioned by name. She's actually, if you go into Matthew's gospel, you read through the genealogy of Jesus and she's there, right in the middle of the, how did she get there? What was going on? What was God doing here? It's obvious that God wanted, I mean, the way anybody is, it ends up uh, being saved, if you like, uh, and salvation is all at God's will and God's command. And, and so therefore God wanted her there. But what's he teaching us through this? What can we learn through Rahab? and her faith this, this morning. We need to read about it first in Hebrews 11, verse 31, and it says this, by faith, Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she gave a friendly welcome to the spies. She welcomed the spies, didn't she? So that was what her faith was for, the fact that she welcomed the spies. We need to go back to Joshua chapter two, and the conquest of Canaan, the story of that in the Old Testament, I had to read her story. And the way it goes is this, is that the children of Israel are have just come over the, the, the Jordan River. It's a bit before it chronolo chronologically what we were talking about yesterday. And Joshua wanted to find out what was going on in, in Jericho. And often that's what they used to do. They were quite happy to to send spies into the enemy territory. That's, what, that's the way battles were fought in those days, as it is probably today as well, as much as we know. Um, so the spies go out, two spies or whatever. The spies are going into, into Jericho. And they go and stay at Rahab's house, uh, who was a prostitute. Now, you might think, what on earth were people of Israel? What on earth were God's people doing going into a place like that? And, and there's all sorts of stories and theories about it. We don't, the answer is we don't really know. What we do know is that what they, um, is that Rachel, Rahab's house would have been where perhaps travellers would have stayed. You know, that, that kind of house where there's, there's a lot of Ill, uh, house of ill repute, if you like, is where travellers would normally go. You wouldn't necessarily expect to see people from this people who are supposed to be following so closely to their God wouldn't necessarily end up there. You wouldn't have thought that. So they must have dressed and looked the same. The whole point of being a spy is that you blend in to the background around you. And, and that's what these two guys did. But of course, it comes out that people recognise and know that they're there. And they know that if they're there, they're probably going to be in Rahab's house. So they go there. Rahab uh, doesn't admit to having the spies there. She welcomed them for a start off. We don't know all about it, but she welcomed them. She must have known that they were from Israel, from the way that they were acting and perhaps speaking. And uh, because she she uh, sends the the people who are looking for them on a wild goose chase and uh, and and she protects the spies in this way. So why did God choose Rahab of all people to be in here? Rahab is, by anyone's standard, a wretched, sinful lady, isn't she? She's she's yeah. You know, we would look at someone like that and walk perhaps uh, away from people like that. We shouldn't do, but perhaps that's what we would do. We would regard them with a distaste and things like that, whose lifestyle was a bit like that. Uh, I guess the, 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 the question is this, why should we have a problem that God would choose somebody like Rahab? Because are we saying that she's a worse sinner than we are? Well, maybe in terms of how the world judges sin, she is, or world judges wrong things, she is. But what about what great God sees it? Whenever God looks from heaven and wants to use people on the earth or wants to save anybody and wants to bring people into his kingdom, the whole world is full, including you and I, of wretched, miserable, horrible, sinful people. And so Rahab, why not Rahab? She's just the same as any one of us. Her problem isn't the, the particular sin that she's committing. It's the problem is that she's rejected God. 
or had done up to this point, which is here we find a clue about why God includes her uh, and brings her here. Because why did they go there? Because God had a person in that city. Uh, when God, uh, so what we find here in, in Joshua chapter 2 and verse 9, look at what she says onwards. Joshua chapter 2 verses 9 onwards. I know the Lord has given you this land, she says to the spies. I know. I'm not, I'm not, I have absolute confidence that God is working with you. Other people in my uh, people are terrified of you and worried about you and, and I'm worried about what's going on. But I know that this is your God is the one who is supreme here because he is the one who has given you this land we i know that she said and we are we are all afraid of you everyone in the land is living in terror and then further down it says for the lord your god is the supreme god of all the heavens above and, and earth below then that's a proper statement of faith isn't it a confession of faith there's been a lot of argument from theologians about whether this is her actually committing herself to god or whether it's just saying something that perhaps she's heard or whatever. But ultimately, the reason God chose her out of all the people in that city was because he knew that she she, she uh, recognised who he was and she had some kind of faith in him, which is why she's in this Hall of Fame of Faith. This is the faith that commends her to God. This is the faith that pleases God. It's not a developed faith. It's not a, an understanding faith. It's a very simple, almost desperate faith, isn't it? Uh, here it's the faith that pleases god it's saving faith really uh, for many people isn't it many sinners who don't understand all the ways of god don't understand the bible don't understand what god has done even in our day but they cling on to a faith i know that this god is real and i i, I don't understand him but i just need to know that he's the only one who can rescue me and that's the faith that rahab had here isn't it uh, even from this wretched sinner a faith that saves here she's desperate she's clinging to the to the, the, the only people who, the only way she's going to be rescued is through these people through these spies and it's pictured of course this wonderful picture of the of the scarlet thread that hangs down out of her window the scarlet rope that's there so that when the people came in and god's people work it's a it, it, it's an understanding that that's going to happen she absolutely believes it's going to happen that when god's people come in and everything else is destroyed. So in other words, God's judgment comes on Jericho. She is going to be spared because of the scarlet thread. Now, that's an amazing emotive picture, isn't it, of course? Again, theologians will argue about whether that does look ahead to Christ on the cross and his blood and all the rest of it. But whatever the situation is, you can argue all day long. But what a wonderful picture that she's saved by the fact that she enacts her faith by living under the protection of a scarlet thread. And that's the faith that saves, isn't it? Trusting in the scarlet thread. It's, she's got a fear of judgment. She's clinging to God's salvation plan, the only plan to be saved. She knows that she's going to be destroyed. Nobody else in Jericho was thinking that. Nobody else was trying to make peace with the people outside and the God of those people. Only Rahab. And so that's why she was saved, wasn't it? That's why she's in this place. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a salvation plan. It is the, the core of faith, isn't it? The simplest of faith. Faced Faith as a mustard seed, isn't it? And that's what God commends her for and responds to in this way, if you like, under the scarlet thread. Well, we've talked a lot about faith in this chapter, haven't we, in different ways. And thought yesterday about following and walking and marching, just living and obeying and applying God's word. But what happens if we don't really know that not an awful lot? What happens if we we struggle with all of that and, and what have you? And, and we know that we're sinners and we know that we keep letting God down and we know that or not the way we should be well god says there is a scarlet thread there is the blood of christ which saves us think of the thief on the cross he's he ended up in heaven a few moments earlier he'd been he'd been on a cross and and uh, he'd been arguing with jesus with with his friend and 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 ultimately you know he, he's he's de in desperation in the same way clinging to christ and saying you're the only one who can save me out of this and he ends up in heaven what are you doing here how come we how come i'm here i don't really belong here rahab must have felt the same way and yet god saved them god saves wretched sinners and i'm glad he does because i'm one of them i'm a sinner too so are you and we need to rejoice in rahab's faith we rejoice that of all those people rahab is there. i mean they're all sinners but rahab is so obviously a sinner and yet god saves her and rescues her because of the scarlet thread because of the, the blood of christ we can be saved too. So the question this morning, even if you've been a Christian for years, 
Who are you clinging to? Do not cling to your own understanding of the scriptures or the Bible or anything else. Yes, we apply those and we walk in them, but we cling to the scarlet thread of God's, of Christ's blood that was shed for us on the cross, that rescues us from our sin, that, that, that has given his life to pay the price for our sin. And the only way we're going to be saved is by trusting in that every single morning. What a great, aren't you glad that Rahab's in there? What a great story, isn't it? And I'm, I'm so glad that Rahab's in there. It's a proper encouragement for all of us today, isn't it? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Hall of Fame of Faith. And we thank you, Lord, that someone like Rachel is, uh, Rahab is there because she reminds us of ourselves. We might not have committed the same sins, but Lord, we are sinful. We are desperate. We need the scarlet thread. We need you to rescue us. And the only means of salvation, and we need to be desperate like her, so, Lord, this morning we pray that we would come to you desperate for our lives, for our, uh, for, 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 uh, our salvation. Even those of us who have been Christians for years and never lose that wonder of the cross and what you've done for us, Lord, we pray. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.